was asking about the recommendations that have been made by various committees, uh, and you've also been sort of trying to elicit answers and responses on what has finally happened on the ground as far as those recommendations are concerned. What has changed in terms of the action taken? I don't know what has changed. All I'm trying to do is to educate the members of the Parliamentary Health Committee that this is an issue. Hmm. Clearly, their predecessors, the 59th Parliamentary Committee and Standing Committee on Health, has put out a scathing report of the way that we currently work. There was an action taken report where, you know, the, the Ministry of Health went back and said, this is what we have done. If you look at it, how much of that actually got implemented? Mm -hmm. The point here is that it has to be political will. And political will only comes in when there is awareness among people who vote. Mm -hmm. If people begin to start asking, you know, why am I being given medicine that doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, people will start, the, the elected representatives will start thinking about this and ask mm -hmm. these questions of the ministry, of the CDSCO, of the regulators that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a CAG report, did you know this, that, that armed forces, yes. you know, the, the armed forces procurement yep. says that one in five medicines that we procure is substandard. Now, mm -hmm. tell me, tell me this. People who, you know, fight for this country, mm. our armed forces, are being given substandard drugs, one in five. Mm. How much, where, where has, you know, where is the public discussion on this? Mm. Why don't we talk about I, this? I'm glad that you mentioned the CAG report because I've got that data as well. The average rate of rejection during the three-year period between 2008-9 to 2010-11 was about 24%. So what does it tell you? CAG report. What does it tell you? Hmm. So let's now talk about the way ahead and the way forward. Uh, from a legal perspective and from the law, we've talked about some of the changes that need to be uh, addressed. But from a regulatory mechanism perspective and the complexity of dealing with multiple regulators, isn't some of what we're talking about getting lost in translation because of that? Structure? It is. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing what you're saying at all. Mm. But the thing is you have to make a start someplace, right? You, you started the interview by asking me, am I being an alarmist or an activist? I think time has come for us to put aside complacency and be a little alarmist about this, right? Let this pendulum swing the other way a little bit. Let's have some discussion around it. Mm -hmm. It may be that there are parts of the current structure, the part of the current regulation is working properly. I've given examples, Tamil Nadu and, and, and Kerala. I think that the inspectors are doing what they ought to be doing, mm -hmm. right? But think about this. How many manufacturing facilities are in Tamil Nadu? Mm -hmm. They're all in Turakhan, they're all in Himachal, right? Even because in, of the, the tax benefits. Exactly. So yeah. the point here is that even an inspector in Tamil Nadu finds a non-standard drug, there's very little that inspector can actually do in Uttarakhand mm -hmm. or in, 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 in Himachal, right? But what about the quality of the regulators? I think the quality... And how different is it from the way that regulators are staffed globally and the way regulators are staffed in see, India? See, the quality of regulators falls in line with the regulation itself, right? I'll give a simple example. The, the, the primary, the, the head of public health, the person responsible for public health in this country, the drug control general of India, our regulation says that that person doesn't need to have a public health background. That law says that person has to be a graduate of pharmacy or related science. Isn't public health important? You're asking me, are they qualified enough? You'll find qualified people if the regulation asks you for qualifications, right? Mm -hmm. Our regulation asks for pharmacy. And so we have a pharmacist or, or people for life sciences. Look at the regulations globally. Peggy Hamburg is an MPH, right? And I, I cannot believe that there are not people in this country who don't have public health background. I just mm -hmm. cannot believe that. Mm -hmm. Everything follows from the law, from the regulation. We mm -hmm. change the regulation, we change the law. These things will fall in place. We will find people who have the right background. We, look, we went and hired Raghuram Rajan from University of Chicago. For, for a billion and quarter people, you think we don't have, you know, we, we can't put a qualified, competent person responsible for public health in this country? Why is there such a difference here? Mm. Because money is obviously something that hurts, right? Mm. Somebody takes money away from your PF or your stock market, you feel it. Medicine as an individual, you know, as a patient today, I have very little control. The doctor prescribes it, I take it, maybe I feel better, maybe I don't. Mm. I don't find out six months down the line that my medicine isn't working. Mm. Right? A provision for recall? Would, would that be one of the key priorities? There, there ought to be, right? I mean, if we had a provision for recall, why would government ban drugs? We don't have a provision for recall in our, in our, in our, in our drug regulation. That's the reason why we have to go ban drugs. Look. Medicines, when they get tested, before they come to the market, they're usually tested on a small subset of people in a clinical study. Mm -hmm. When the medicine gets you know, to the patient population, you will see things. This is normal. There's a, there's a drug called Vioxx. You know, this is back in 2003. 
it got to the market and, and we had to pull it back because we saw things that we didn't see in, in, in the clinical study. Mm. The regulations have to provide, you know, the, the, the framework for these things to happen. In India, we do not have a national, you know, regulatory system where we can actually effectively recall drugs from everywhere. Mm. The, the, the inspector in Kerala finds a non-standard drug the least that they can do is report back to the CDSC and put it on their, their website. There is no force of enforcement behind law to, to account for all the, the SKUs and PACs that are available in the country. Mm. We need to have that kind of system in place. And look, um, this is nothing that I'm saying here has not been thought about, okay? The expert committees have thought about all these things and made very sound recommendations. Mm. But the recommendations have not been fallen through. Not, it needs political not will to, 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 to implement those recommendations, mm. right? Let's start there. Well, you know, speaking of uh, the experience that you've had, Dinesh, and once again, questions on why do you care? I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not even in India. Uh, you've, you've done the Rand Baxi case. You made $45 million on account of that. You know, and there are questions on why should you care about what's happening here in India? And, uh, you know, if, if there was a problem, surely somebody would have noticed it. I come back to that because that's the criticism that you're up against. So I think that, you know, I think that's a valid criticism. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not discounting, you know, any of what has been said. But my, pro my issue is as follows, right? I think what the Ranbaxy case did, it opened up a can Pandora's box. But the beneficiaries are primarily patients in, in Western and established countries. Things have gotten worse for us, for Africans, for, for, for people who live in Latin America. Now the question that you've asked is, why do I care, right? I care because my family lives here, my dad lives here, my mom lives here. They're 70 some years old, okay, and they go to, to the same pharmacy and buy medicines. I have, you know, friends who live here. It's not possible for people to, to continue buying medicines from abroad and bring them back in here, okay? And the, 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 the problem that I have is it's not like that we don't know how to do things mm. right. We know how to do things right. But the problem with us is the moment, you know, somebody's not looking over our shoulder, mm. we try to make, take shortcuts. Mm. That is what needs to be fixed. And the only way to fix that is the force of law and the force of enforcement. Mm. You know, How easy has it been for you to actually get access to the information that you've put together as part of your PIL that you submitted it's to It's been the difficult. Look, we've been working on it for two years right now, right? PILs are not the easiest thing to file because we've studied every PIL that was filed and looked at the kind of data that was presented, you know, in, to, the, to the court. Um, RTA processes, although the law is very good, implementation is still challenging. I mean, I can tell you with all the, C all the RTS we filed with the CDSGO Central, they were all sort of shunted off to zonal offices. And zonal offices then send them back to the center. You really will not get an answer the first time around. That's the reason why it took us two, you know, two long years to collect and mm. you know, collate all, all this information. But what I'm doing right now is putting all this information public. Mm. If somebody wants to take it and run with it, look, you can argue with me with my opinion, but you can't argue with the data. Mm. And what I'm hoping is the industry moves away from me as an individual, as a messenger, mm. and focuses on the data. Because mm. right now, I think the conversation today... Have you had any conversation with industry? Uh, I'm in, in, in this two-year period, they don't I'm, like you very much, but I'm, have you had any conversation with industry no, on, on, on the tried. problem, I have on tried. identifying the solutions, which, which we already know? Look, I've tried, okay? I've reached out to the CEO of a very large company because I thought he had made some comments in public saying, I want to do the right thing. Right? So I wrote to him and I said, look, if you genuinely feel that you're going to do the right thing, I will help you. I reached out to Dr. Jian Singh. He and I was on a panel at the Public Health, World Public Health Congress in Kolkata in 2015. Unfortunately, he didn't show up. So I was hoping to actually talk to him at that time. Vaikya Gupta, the, the AIDS professor, was there. So he and I you know, had, had a conversation because he's in influence in policy making as well. Mm. I'm trying. Look, I'm trying. And, and the reason I care is because, you know, somebody has to say something about this, mm. right? You are, are you giving up on the legal route now, given what happened at the Supreme Court? I think that, that the legal route will probably become a reality once there is enough public awareness. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that, that the court, you know, uh, would, would, would react in this way if they had a better understanding of the problem. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think the level of awareness exists among us at the moment. We need to be able to educate our people. Right, and if, be, if it becomes a topic of conversation, mm. public consciousness, mm. perhaps the, the court will look at things differently. So before I end this uh, program, and for viewers who are watching, and again because it's a complex issue, uh, you know, what what is the key message uh, that you want to put out there to start this public discourse? I just want people to start paying attention and ask questions. That's where it starts, right? Mm. If what would you identify as being the big problem? 
the problem is, is the, the, the quality of medicines because our first line of in, in healthcare because of the lack of primary health centers in India medicines is essentially the first line of defense for us I just want people to ask questions if the doctor says the next time the doctor doesn't suit you or the doctor doesn't suit you ask the doctor why are you changing doctor I mean the person who earns 300 rupees a day in this country goes and buys medicines for 30, 40, 50 rupees goes back to the doctor 3, 5 days later and says the doctor says you are changing the doctor what about the money that is spent? Is that charity towards pharma companies? Mm. What are the long-term you know, implications of, of, of that on overall healthcare? I just want people to ask questions. The only three grassroots change happens when people start to ask questions. Why is it that Tri is paying so much attention to call drafts? Because we're all frustrated. Yeah. We ask these questions, why does my phone go dead every five minutes in the car? When you do that, try ask questions. Similarly, SEBI asks questions when you know, there's financial irregularities. Yeah. People ask questions, what is happening to my private, you know, private fund? Why is the, stock market, you know, the, the insurance company is doing this, that and the other? Mm. If people start asking questions, governments, which are representatives of people, respond to those questions. All I want is people to ask questions. Well, we're starting that process here on CNBC TV 18. Dinesh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. As I pointed out, this is just the first in our series that we're going to be looking at addressing some of these issues that we've talked about today. Uh, we will, of course, try and get as many stakeholders into this conversation. We're starting the conversation here, but we hope that we will get representatives from the pharma industry, the government, as well as the regulator to respond to some of the questions and some of the issues that have been raised here by Dinesh Thakur. It's been a pleasure speaking right. with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So for your time. Much. On that note, it is time for us to wrap up the first part of our special series here on CNBC TV 18. We will continue to decode this complex issue right here. Till then, from all of us here on the team, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.